Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC you'd like to see it get put together live, send me a message today. Alright, back tonight for another live PC build. So tonight we'll be building this rig here. Um, a little bit less RGB than what we normally do, but not every rig is about RGB, and RGB certainly doesn't equal performance. So let's go through the components that we've gone with here tonight. So starting with our graphics card. So we've got the RTX 2060 here, which we've used a few of recently in our builds. So we'll put this one to the side for now, because it's the last component that we're going to install. But we have the MSI B460M Pro VDH Wi-Fi motherboard. So this is a well-equipped motherboard here with two M2 slots and built-in Wi-Fi Bluetooth. But we'll have a look at that when we unbox it. We've got the Intel i7-10700F CPU here, 8 cores and 16 threads. Uh, it's got to be the cheapest 8 core 16 thread CPU you can get right now. You can pick this up for about 370 bucks, which is a pretty good price for, for an 8 core CPU. So we've got a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD here, so Kingston NV1. We've got 32 gigabytes of G Skill Rip Jaws 5. Um, this is 3600 MHz CL18 memory. We've got a 650 watt Cooler Master 80 plus bronze power supply. Got a couple of extra case fans and stuff here. And we've got the Azza Apollo 430 case here. So it's a pretty good looking case for um, for the price. You have the glass side panel and all that, but it's not too big and bulky like um, like some of the cases are. There's a reasonable amount of room for cable management. It's not, there's not abundance of room, um, but we're not going to be installing a heap of RGB components in here tonight. So we're going to have a lot less wires out the back to contend with. So let's get started. So let's put these to the side here. Let's have a look at this motherboard. Wi-Fi antennas, some SATA cables, an IO shield, some M2 bolts, get our CD and our Go Faster badge. But we won't be needing any of that. So here is our motherboard. So if you're looking for a good value motherboard with an Intel chipset, look no further. So as I said, this is the MSI B460M Pro VDH Wi-Fi motherboard. So if we go around the board, I'll point out the features. So even though they are small, we do have direct touch heat sinks here um, on our MOSFET VRM co-processors. There are decent, decent quality chokes on this board that I can see. Um, just, just noticing these, they're not as, not as cheap as, as some. Um, so pretty good there. I'm, I'm, I like the fact that we've even got a little bit of cooling here on, on our co-processors. Like a lot of the time on a cheaper board, they'll just have a, um, a heat sink here on the MOSFET VRM and they won't have anything up here. But we've got eight pins of CPU power up here. We've got dual channel memory. So channel one, channel two, two channels, four slots. We've got CPU fan header and a pump fan header. That's just what they're designated as. We've got a 24 pin ATX power connector here. This will power everything else on our motherboard here. We've got two more fan headers. We've got, looks like some 
like sort of voltage selection pins, perhaps. We've got four SATA ports. We've got two in the horizontal position and two in the vertical position. We have a speaker header for our debug speaker, our front panel connections, and we have our TPM 2.0 port, which all of a sudden is now important because of Windows 11. So you always hear me talk about there's the TPM header and, and I, I just sort of skip over it because we don't usually use it. Well, that's it there. So what have we got over here? We've got USB 3. It's like, no, clear CMOS is over here. That's something else. We have two USB 2s. Like we've got the serial port, COM port. Uh, looks like a 5 volt RGB header, a 12 volt RGB header. Um, front panel audio, audio capacitors, and audio system. We've got these five pins here. That'll either be like a Thunderbolt or maybe COM port debug header, but potentially. These two pins here, these are our clear CMOS pins, so they're up here with the battery on most MSI motherboards. And around the back here, we've got obviously our audio down here. We have our Wi Fi Bluetooth, which is just one of those little cards, and it's plugged into a vertical, like M key slot there. And then we've got gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3.0s, we have a HDMI output, a DVI and a, a VGA output, none of these will be in use for this build. We've got a PS2 and two USB 2.0 ports. And then all we haven't spoken about is just this stuff in the middle here. So we've got two M2 slots here, as I, as I said, which is good to see. We've got our main PCIe X16 slot, but then we don't have another X16 length slot. We've just got these two other X1 slots. So if you were buying this board and you wanted to run like a 4K capture card, usually they've got an X4 interface, so this board wouldn't be for you. But if the only other thing you wanted to add other than a graphics card, was potentially Wi-Fi, um, more USB ports, um, things like that that will fit into the X1 slot, you're in business. Alrighty. So that sort of sums up the main features of our board so we can get into starting to prep this board. So to start off with, I'm gonna get this M2 offset. No. Yeah. Hey Tapiri, how you going? Good to have you with us. Have you seen my pliers? Huh? Yeah. The green ones. Oh, yes, outside on the veranda. Really? Yeah. Did you have them out there? No, you were using them out there when you were soldering. Oh, that's right. I just need him to grip onto this bolt here. Just like that. All I need them for. So I'm just going to install the offset into the 2280 position which is the standard position for our M2 drives and we've got some M2 screws here as well there's only room to screw in um, two of them but they give you three so if you drop one on the floor you can just let it get absorbed by the carpet <laughs> You don't have to worry. You get two other chances. <laughs> so I'll screw both of them in, even though we're not going to be using them. 
just so that they're actually in place. We'll be using one of them, but yeah, won't be using that second slot. And it's always a pain trying to find those little screws. Alrighty, so on this motherboard, we're gonna be using this slot here first. And we're gonna put this one in here second. Nice and easy. Yeah. Um, this is for oh, it's was it oh, having a total mental blank. I, I, someone's gonna have to look that up for me. Um, I, I want to say it's Brian. Oh man, that's so bad. Oh yeah. But I'm the first one to admit that I'm shit with names. Yeah, the, the top. Bradley? Um, no. Blake. Blake. Yes. Blake, sorry. Has he seen my message? Hopefully he's not watching yet. <laughs> yeah, he's seen he's it. He's seen it. Oh, he's probably watching it. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. Great. All right, let's get this CPU in the board. All right. So. One of the things we what? Blake says, "Good job, Tom." <laughs> ah, just, yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Perfect. Perfect response. There we go. That CPU just drops in the socket there. This plate will pop off. You do want to keep that, like I've got a big, I've got a big bag full of them, so I don't really need to keep them, but. Alright, so we'll put this little stock cooler on it, at least it's got the copper, the copper centre there. Alright, as long as we're not going to be doing intensive video editing, this will be fine for gaming. This is, of course, a F CPU, not a K. If we had the 10700K, we wouldn't have a cooler included. We would have to provide our own cooling solution for that configuration. Just seal that cable. There we go. That sits in like that. Alrighty. So we've actually got our board prepped. So nice and easy. Look how easy it is when you don't have RGB and fancy liquid coolers or awkward to install air coolers. Alrighty. So here is the Azza Apollo 
for 30 case. So it's quite a it's quite a nice looking case. It's got you know the the metal bit down there, and then we've got a nice sort of like smaller profile glass panel. So kind of kind of has like a neater cleaner look to it than if you just have like a whole panel glass if you know what I mean just sort of looks a bit a bit sharper be cooler if it was ventilate it had vents on it down there that's what I'd like to see all right so let's just start by removing all the panels from this case so we can actually work on it we've got a few extra fans to install Hey man, yeah, absolutely. Just send me, a, just send me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty busy. I'm pretty busy right now, but I'll be, yeah, probably tomorrow, tomorrow in the AM. I'll be getting back to a heap of people with quotes. So if I've missed you today, um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting to you. I go like, oh yeah, I'm all caught up, and then I and then I go have a lie down, come back two hours later, and I've got more. Are so, going at the top? no. So what we're going to do? We're going to put we're going to put one fan up the top, and we're going to put two on the front. So we've got two drawing in and two drawing out. So we can start by just putting one up the top here in the exhaust position. If not, the holes don't line up. Mm. Yeah, so like I said, we've already got a fan on the back here. And so we're just going to put one up the top. And we're going to put two at the front. And so the reason the reason why we're doing it like that is because we have a total of four fans. So we want two of them to be drawing cool air in, and we want two of them to be pushing warm air out. So to access the front of this case. This is a little bit fun if I remember right. First you remove these two bolts and then yeah then 
this piece slides out. So I'm going to put two of them down the bottom and in the middle at the front here. So we've got cool air that will sort of blow over our graphics card as well. We won't be neglecting that with this setup. So yeah, like I, was, like I always say, balanced airflow is really important to keeping everything cool because you don't want like a greenhouse effect occurring in your case where heat just starts getting trapped and starts building up. You want a nice flow of air through the case. The, the, the downside of that is obviously with a, with a higher flow of air through the case, you get a little bit more dust. But then that should just be managed with um, periodic cleaning of the case with a, um, with, a, with a leaf blower or something, a blower vac or whatever. I've heard of people using a hairdryer, it's better than nothing. It's probably more effective than a vacuum cleaner, put it that way. So yes, if you if you wanted more fans on this case, you could easily install another two and make it three in, three out. Or you could upgrade the, the CPU cooler and put a all-in-one liquid cooler in. And you could mount that to the top. And then you could move the fan that's up the top to the front and then you'd have two fans on the radiator, one fan at the back and they would be expelling the heat from the case. That's another configuration that could work for an upgrade of this. <clears throat> and then you wouldn't be buying any extra fans, you'd just be moving one of the existing ones and installing the new cooler. Yeah. Where's the beers? Where's the beers? <laughs> Do do one drunk, <laughs> and, and it would it wouldn't take it wouldn't take much for me. It would not take much for me. I don't drink anymore, so I'm like lightweight as, as fuck. Yeah, you have one beer and then you get a hangover and vomit. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's about the about the size of it. Yeah, it is a bit. I got the aircon remote around here. Let me put it on dry. 
I'm thinking after last night, I'm thinking I might be sleeping with it on dry tonight. <laughs> So what have we got? Standard 5 volt RGB for that. And we have a 5 volt RGB controller here as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. Here's our mounting hardware, including cable ties really really good. There's our little bag of screws. Alright. Let's get this power supply in place. power supply face down in this case. Okay, let's put all these cables. So we're not going to need, we're not going to need much. We're just going to need cable here, we need this cable here, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry people, I, I didn't, I didn't get around to doing the follow-up, however, the, the customers already picked up the computer, um, so everything was all sweet, um, I don't know what happened while I left the room, but, Apparently Corsair IQ just like decided to randomly turn off all the RGB, just reset itself or, or did something. And um, yeah, when I came back, I was like, huh, why is this not working anymore? But then when I went into the settings in Corsair IQ, I just manually turned everything back on. They just turned back on. So happy days. Hey Fred, how you going? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I saw that. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll put it back later. I don't want to. I already just, just finished putting it back. <laughs> I don't want to take it out again. So here's the cables we don't need, let's tie them up. 
and they can be stashed away with our power supply. Um, yeah, so this one is the Azza Apollo 430. So, um, yeah, I mean, I build in any any case, any case that someone likes. So, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I'll, there are popular cases that I build, but it's not like it's not like oh, if you buy a PC through me, there's only like ten cases to choose from or something like that. It's not it's not like that. I'll get any case in that a customer wants for a build. No point in saying you build custom computers if you can't <laughs> customise all your parts. Okay. So now I've got the cables that we do need. We do have we do have this cable here, a SATA cable for the RGB controller. What we can do is we. Is there a stick in like over the middle of the back of the way? I don't know. But we can plug that into one of the SATA ports that we tied away. Just plug that in. Doesn't feel like it's in properly. That feels like it's in properly. And then we can just stash that cable back down there with our power supply. Very good. So we got some other cables as well. Tim? Yeah. What's the what's the best clock on these ten seven hundreds? Do they do they run the number of the eleven nine hundred K? No, they won't. They won't get the the same single core numbers that um of the eleven nine hundred K will. We can't do much in the way of overclocking this one because it's the F series. So, like what I generally say to people about um, Intel i7 10th gen is they're essentially the i9 9th gen chips but they just call them i7s in 10th gen because they made the i9s 10 cores 20 threads for that so all right so we can plug we can just plug this cable here straight into this rgb controller and we've already got the back fan already plugged into that RGB controller so we've just got the PWM fan header there which will run out the back okay so looking pretty good around here we're all sort of organized we can go and put our case in so sorry our motherboard inside the case <laughs> our case inside the motherboard it would be. <coughs> Maybe a Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> hey, you wouldn't you couldn't put it past them. They do some crazy shit. We've got it's like a pretty standard looking 
eight pin configuration there. We'll have to change some bolts around, no doubt. Yep. Okay, got all those offsets in place. So let's mount our motherboard. Oh, it's missing another one. Really? Okay, that's looking pretty good. So we'll just get these eight screws tied down. What's up? Alrighty, <clears throat> so now we have our motherboard installed. Yeah. Hey Tony, how you going? Good to have you with us. Alright, let's get, let's get these front panel connections in place. I'm going to run these directly behind the motherboard here. Plug them in right over here.
just like that. And what else have we got to go in down there? We've got front panel audio. Pushes. Slide that one down behind our motherboard. There we go. What else have we got? We have a 5 volt RGB. Well, this might be a bit more of a challenge to get down. USB 3, we'll probably run that one, probably from down here, a little bit chunky, there's not much you can do with them, but we might be able to conceal that with our graphics card power cable, but I'll just leave it plugged in there for now. And so now we've got some fans to plug in. So all of our fan headers, nice and conveniently, are over this side. So that makes it relatively easy for us to hook all this up. So you can hook up one up there. And then these ones have got ketchup and mustard cables. So what I might do with them might use this extension and what we'll do is we'll run this extension from one of these fan headers over here I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually zip tie these up together here And then we're just going to plug these three fans. Oh, let me not get my wires crossed here. cable link to tidy up back there but that's alright. So now we're just left with these three plugs. Actually I really don't really don't want to really do my head in actually. Normally, I'd, I would I would just do it while we're um, installing, but even this is a bit too messy for me. Thank you. 
It's even, it was doing my head in too much for me to fix it later. I had to fix it now. Under five hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty hard right now. That's looking a lot It's not giving me anxiety just knowing it exists. So it's not the neatest, but we don't really need it to be overly complex. Because like I said, if we have a problem and we have too many cable ties tying everything down, then that's just more cable ties to unclip making more work so what I say is good cable management means that we can close this back panel with ease and that we're not squashing or jamming anything into the case and it should be also easy to work on fundamentally so now we've got all these small cables in place we can worry about these big ones so we don't, we might not necessarily need all the cable length for this. So where is our motherboard? Motherboard's up there. So I think we can probably, probably end up tying some of this cable back. But we'll see. but I can, I can push it down. Why does the graphics card box say dual series GPU tweak to the side of it? Oh, that's the name of the ASUS app to try to be like MSI Afterburner, but it's not as good. Okay. 
Okay, so, yeah, like I said, there's not really much room in this case. I'm not even going to be out of... This is a solid 8-pin CPU piece, so I'll use that one. And then maybe I could stash this away if I separate it. So when you pay for a bigger and more expensive case, usually it's easier to do the cable management. So when people buy cases like this, it's too to test. <laughs> no, this, this isn't too bad. There are, there are harder cases than this, that's for sure. What's the hardest case you've built in so far, Do you? Oh, jeez. I'm not, I'm not sure off the top of my head. Okay, so now all we have to do is plug in our graphics card. Okay, so we're going to be utilising slots 1 and 2. Oh, I might be sitting here a while. This is a knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Alrighty. Here it is. Asus Jewel RTX. 1360. I like those boxes. It's so satisfying. It is a nice like thing they've done. Some crazy Japanese origami. See, I'm, I'm pulling them off. <laughs> Alrighty. So I might, I might pull a couple of these plugs out and I'll put them in the motherboard. So we won't be using those outputs on the motherboard yet. Take the box Sweet as. Oh yeah, I'll put the DDI cap on. <laughs> they have a little thank you card. Yeah, they always do. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I never really look in the boxes. <laughs> I always like, crush them before I can even look at them. Yeah, I know.
Alrighty. So now we've got left to do is plug in our graphics card. So I'm going to use the graphics card cable to conceal that USB 3 cable. Looks like getting caught on. Something it should never have ever gotten caught on in a million years. It should be physically impossible for it to happen that it, it happened. what happens when we've got a stock cooler and no RGB and all of that. Yeah, well that's why, that's why it's cheaper labour rate right, to do these. Go and they can just sit like that. What? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, she said something about that. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got a couple of Wi-Fi antennas, we'll just stick them on the back. Sweet as. And there we have it. So a nice, clean looking Micro ATX build. We've got no ugly cables at the bottom. We've run them all behind the motherboard and stuff where possible. So overall, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. So whether I'm happy with it or not really doesn't matter. All that matters is whether it turns on and whether it does what we expect it to do. I will put that back. Yeah, I know. I was just sticking it to that you so just, you don't lose it. You just, you just <laughs> make it sure I don't forget. Mm -hmm. Not just forget that to put it back, but forget that I fucked up. <laughs> uh, 
Um, what else do I need? I need some peripherals. And my chair's not running over the cable. Okay, so we've got some windows, which we'll need. We'll need a display cable, because if we can see, that'll be, that'll definitely be a good thing. Okay. So are we ready? Moment of truth time. Time to see whether I fucked up or the parts fucked up. That's looking pretty, pretty alive. Show me a post. Hang on, that display cable's really tight, baby. Alrighty. It's always a good sign when it turns on and goes to this screen. Stray bits on the top. Possibly. That's right. No, it's sticking out down the bottom. Look at that. That's not right. Yeah, no, it, it they is? do, they do, do they just stick out sometimes? Sometimes you just need to put the bolt on and that rubber. It's because it's just the rubber thing mm. that's caught. If you tighten down all four bolts, it'll just fall into place. Mm. And now I've got a dust filter to put back on. Okay. 
Okay. Let's select our region. You need to move that other mouse away from your hand. Okay, so now we can plug in some internet. Is the RGB trying to be yellow? Yeah. It's green. It's kind of yellow. It's the ve it's if you say that's green, that is like the yellowest that green can be. Yeah, no, I was gonna say it. it's green, but it's still yellow at the same time. Yeah. RGB just can't do yellow properly. <laughs> it's more yellow on the street. Okay, here we are. Let's get Windows all up to date. Okay, so we'll get all of the, that Windows software up to date, plus Dragon Center and Cinebench. And where is my SSD? Okay, so what have we got in here? Not no WD. Lucky the MSI Dragon. Yeah, but the, uh, after seeing the plushie at um, you bought the other day, I'm like, take my money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get some other software going on.
Okay. If you want to get one, just look on eBay. I'm trying to find them, but there's... It, it, it's called Lucky. Yeah, I... Just search MSI Lucky plushie. Or toy. graphics card drivers They won't sell it to me, man. Like, there's one here, but you gotta buy all this other stuff, and it's $80. Oh, it was $90, rather. It was $71.99 US. Like, you get, like, the towel and all this other stuff as well. You can't, like, just buy it on this. Mm.
why is NVIDIA, why is GeForce Experience just like not playing with me tonight? Set up Reva Tuna. Whoops.
Finally. I think that was everything that we needed from here. That's everything. Just wait for Office to download. Let's set the date and time. Make sure we don't have heaps of stuff starting up automatically when we open Windows. Yeah, they're okay. So yeah, to turn that to turn that off, you can just it doesn't want to respond. Yeah, excellent. Oh yeah, it's already turned itself off. Those values have stalled. There's anything I'm forgetting here. Stop. Sweet. There we go. So we can do our first reboot now. doing that, I'm going to fix this dust filter.
Okay. Perfect timing. Okay. It's not a that's that's not a fair benchmark because it's it's doing other stuff right now. Those temps, yeah, temps are fine. And let's run some quick benchmarks while that final update is doing its thing. So this value here under where it says RAM, this is this is the frames per second that it's currently running. As you can see at CPU, not really doing much work here. Which is what you want. The last thing you want is your CPU to be on 100% and your graphics card to not be on 100%. Then you're not getting all of the performance out of your graphics card, you're being held back by the CPU. You want the weakest component for gaming to be your graphics card. So you want the CPU to be able to keep up with it, the memory to be able to keep up with it, have enough storage. The graphics card should be the bottleneck, if that makes sense. That should be the performance limiting factor in your build. Should should always be able to have the, the graphics card up near 100% usage while you're playing a game, and your CPU should be between 10 and 70%. It was getting above that, I would say that you're, you're getting into CPU bottleneck ter territory.
So I would say roughly between 150 and 300 frames a second. Still doing its thing. Alright, so that was Heaven. So the next one is also a DirectX 11 benchmark, but we run it on maximum. And so I do the same things every night so that people can look at different configurations and see how they perform at the same test. And so this one we run ultra with anti-aliasing up on maximum. So you always get lower frames per second on, on this one, not just because it's on ultra, just because it's a, um, it's a bigger image to render. Alrighty. Alright, get that final Windows update. But it's looking like this PC is once I do a stress test on it, it'll be ready for collection. So, whenever Blake wants to pick it up. Oh.
everything here should be all updated. Some people remove all this, all these things, but eh, it comes with Windows. You can uninstall them if you want. They're all updated. Everything's all good. Okay, so let's run the last benchmark that we do. This one's a 4K benchmark. Just a second. Just like that, like my page. <laughs> okay. So there's our 4K benchmark going, all right. 6,141. 6, so that's it's the same card as last night, wasn't it? Maybe the night before. Okay. It was, yeah, it wasn't last night, it was the night before. Yeah, last night was 30, Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 um, yeah, so Justin wants to know all the, all the different programs that, that I install there, so, so mainly they're just, they're just simple diagnostic programs and applications, so some of them are here, I, I'm installing to do stress tests on the computer, um, some I'm just installing, um, just so, you, it's just so you have them there in the background, so, while well, it's doing that, so there's CPU ID, which tells you all the information about the CPU. You've got hardware monitor, which uh, provides readouts of all of your hardware and temperatures and powers and clocks and all that. And then there's crystal disk info, which I'll show you. It tells you the status of your drives. Even plays a little sound if they're all good. So both of our, our brand new ones, see, see here, this is the new SSD we installed. See, it's been turned on once. It hasn't even been on for an, a logged hour. And then you can see mine's been turned on a number of times. All right, so that's Crystal Disk Info. Crystal Disk Mark is what the name kind of suggests, where you can test the speed of your, your storage devices. GeForce Experience is just an app for NVIDIA drivers to keep them up to date. Google Chrome, we know what that is. Heaven Benchmark, Valley Benchmark, Superposition Benchmark, we've just run those apps. So they're, they're um, graphics benchmarks apps. Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, that's where you can um, adjust some of the parameters of your CPU. You can um, turn the limits off and stuff so it just boosts constantly and whatnot so you can have a play around with that um, Edge, we know what Edge is MSI Afterburner is for your graphics card and it's also where I get this overlay to come from so that's called Reva Tuner Statistics Server and that's a component of MSI Afterburner and then VLC Media Player is just a lightweight, ultra-compatible media player that will play pretty much any kind of video file that you've got. If, 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 uh, if you've got a file and VLC won't play it, it's a virus, yeah. basically. Um, so yeah, I install that on, on every computer because it's the best media player. Um, so there, these are just really basic apps. None of these apps take up a lot of room. The benchmarks probably take up the most room out of all these apps. But if you have any sort of problems, um, rather than me um, walking people through downloading hardware monitor and crystal disk info, I just install these apps on everyone's computer. And they just sit there in the background. And if you don't use them, you don't use them. They don't take up any considerable space on your drive. So it's not really a big deal. It's not malware. It's not logging any information about you or anything like that. These are just very basic diagnostic apps. They're all freeware that's, um, that's widely used within the tech community and stuff. You can look up all of these apps. They're used extensively. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I do. So. When I install Windows, I install this software here as well. And then if we have any issues, it's easy to diagnose. And as we can see here with our stock cooler, with all the settings at default, we're not, we're not having any issues here with, with temperatures and stuff. So what I could do is I could go into Extreme Tuning Utility. I'll show you what this does. And we can we can tell it to to do different things when it wants to load. It's just taking a while because I'm running Cinebench. Okay, so it's got power throttling already anyway, so I don't know how much extra performance we're going to be able to get out of this. 
but let's give it a go. Yep. Um, antivirus. I I use Bitdefender. I've been using it for like no, <laughs> seventeen years or so. And there we can see the temperature on the CPU is now up to throttling levels because I've turned off all of these limits. So we can just go back to profiles, default, show values, apply. And now when we go back, why have I used it? Yeah. There we go. I've used Bitdefender for ages because it's the best. And there we go. To take those, put those limits back on the CPU and those temps settle back down. So even though you don't have a K-series CPU, there is still some extra performance you can pull out of your um, Intel chips with this extreme tuning utility. So obviously you can see the temps jumped up really, really significantly when I, when I adjusted these values here. Um, so you, you don't want to do this unless you've got a big cooler on your CPU and it can handle this. So also we'd, we'd want a, a bigger motherboard as well with 12 pins of CPU power ideally because right now we're being held back by power delivery. So it's fine, it's running at stock completely normally in this situation. There's our 360 or 70 dollar eight core CPU chugging along, beating all those old Xeons, smashing an old 770k, 7700k, I should say. And roughly on on par with like a a top of the top of the line i9 ninth gen laptop. Yeah, Bitdefender's Bitdefender's really good. Um, you can get it's on special right now, and I think it's like like fifty bucks for five devices for a year. But if you look at like antivirus, what's the best antivirus program? And you go and look at 10 different websites that are listing the 10 best antivirus programs, you'll find Bitdefenders up in the top three on pretty much everyone's list. So regardless of who's paid for it, you can see that Bitdefender's always right up the top. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter who's, who's paying for it. That is arguably um, one of the best ones. So there are other good ones as well. Um, Kapersky's good. Um, they're pretty much the only two I'd recommend. I wouldn't want to recommend any of the others personally, like officially on this channel. Um, but yeah, I trust the Eastern Europeans when it comes to cyber security, you know? They don't fuck around. What's that? Hey Ryan, how you going man? Yeah, good man. Just, um, yeah, we're just finishing up here tonight. No issues here with this, um, with this setup. Graphics cards running there. The hotspots at 75 degrees maximum there, which is really good. Um, we don't want to be seeing that over 80 degrees. 75 is fine. I mean, the card itself. 60 degrees that's that's very 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 cold for a graphics card so yeah like this is pretty much the end so i just let this i let this run oh, i don't think i set it up right yeah it's only going to run for another 17 seconds there but once that's done i'm going to set it up to run for 90 minutes and i just let this go and then we just make sure that 
everything's everything's running sweet and we don't have some sort of fundamental problem with any of our components although just talk to um just talk to scott about that who you know i i built him a computer i stress tested it i shipped it up to him in bundaberg he used it once downloaded some games then he was like oh I'm gonna. I'm just gonna shut the computer down, and I'm gonna go have dinner. And so he shuts the computer down, goes and has dinner, comes back, turns it on, and now it won't turn on anymore. And his CPU died. It wasn't his motherboard or RAM or anything like. That. It was his CPU that died. So I probably should have bought a lot lotto ticket. It's that rare. <laughs> um, so we'll go 90 minutes, advanced benchmark, 90 minute test, and we'll hit start, and we'll put hardware monitor up here, and we need the frames per second, we just want the temps. You can leave that bar down there. And this is how I basically leave it for, for 90 minutes. And like, I'll be, you know, I'll be happy to like leave the stream on for people to see this like run, but it's pretty boring and I run out of things to say and I'm usually, usually ready for, for dinner by this stage. So it's normally when I end the stream and, um, and sign off. But yeah, as you can see here, we've, um, we're not going to have any issues with temperatures. This is just going to run and do its thing. The CPU will sit about 75 degrees maximum. The graphics card, maybe 65 degrees maximum. And we're just making sure the hotspot's not getting too hot there, which it's not. Don't worry about that, that's when I adjusted the settings in XTU. And then other than that, we've gone through all the other apps there that we install. And so all this software, this is all free, by the way. So you can, you just look up, look up these and, and you'll be able to download these apps for free. So if you're... If you see me use something here and, and run some sort of tests and you're like, oh, I don't really understand those numbers. What's that like compared to mine? You can just download the app, run the same test, and then you can go, oh, okay. So that computer that he built last night, that's like this much better than mine. You can, you can work out what all that means. Like when I look at these numbers every day, I can go, oh, yeah, sweet. It gets this much on CPU ID or it gets this much in in the heaven benchmark and i can sort of quantify what that means but if you're just watching it and you don't know the easiest way to know is just to download some of these apps and run them for yourself and see how your own system performs and then you can make a comparison so yeah unless anyone has any other questions before i sign off i think this is where i'll probably leave it for tonight Yeah. For a beginner, um, I don't. If you've got, if you're just wanting to have a look around, um, I wouldn't recommend overclocking for any beginner as such. Um, Yeah, I, it's it's hard for me to recommend recommend you know sort of anyone kind of playing around with any setting that they that they don't know and they're unfamiliar with. Okay, so XTU, I install XTU on Intel systems just because usually one way or another someone wants to um, wants to play around with something. Sometimes it's as simple as like, like what I find with a lot of systems is someone will upgrade their cooler 
And when they upgrade their cooler, they're, they're, they're thinking, yeah, I want to get extra performance out of my system. And that's the easiest way to do it is with that XTU app. If you've got an F series CPU, if you've got the K series, then they're fully unlocked and overclockable. Whereas with the F, F1s, they're not. I couldn't adjust half the things in there are grayed out. So if you've just got an F series CPU, you can download XTU and really anything that you adjust in there, you can't really hurt anything too much because you can't adjust any voltages. You can't adjust any clock speeds. All you can do is just turn off limits. So you can turn off the turbo time limit. You can turn off the turbo power limit. You can turn off things like that. And then, then you will get a bit of extra performance out of your CPU. But as you can see, when I did it, you could see that the temperature spiked straight up to 100 degrees. So it's not something that with this particular configuration that we're going to be able to do. However, if the cooler gets upgraded, because um, obviously this PC can be upgraded and stuff over time, um, then you will be able to get some extra performance out of your um, out of your i7. So that's kind of why why you'll always see me install it. I also install Ryzen Master on AMD CPU systems as well. Um, once again, my advice to everyone is if you don't know what something is, um, don't touch it especially to do with overclocking. Since I've, since I've fixed my best CPU... Bent. Bent, CPU. bent CPU pins, could the CPU still work? They're not all bent now and all broken. Yeah, if... if so, so the pins... The pins themselves are just a how would you say, um, they just make contact between the motherboard and the circuitry on the CPU. It's just a little bit of, it's just a little bit of gold. So as long as you straighten that pin out and it's, and all the pins are nice and straight and in line and you can put it in the socket, chances are it's going to be completely fine. Um, I get I get bent CPU pins all the time. Um, sometimes, sometimes I, I'll just drop one, and and it will get bent from that, and I'll have to repair it. Happens all the time. Um, if if they if they snap off, that's another story, because it's very 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 difficult. I would say probably impossible to reattach an individual pin to the bottom of a CPU. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's okay. Um, I mean, it's a little bit, they can be hard to sort of fix. It can be a real fuck around job. Um, you know, if, if you want, if, if you're in Brisbane, and you've got bent CPU pins, bring it in. I've done, I've done a lot of them. So I could probably do it quicker than you. So depending on how much time you want to spend and how bad the situation is. I mean, if it's just one of them bent, you could probably just sort of bend it back with your finger sort of thing. Um, if it's a whole row of them bent or like one of the ones in the middle is bent and all the ones around it are straight, that can be a bit harder to to fix you might need some special tools some really fine tweezers and stuff but in general with AMD CPUs me at bent pins they're around the edge and they're generally the easiest to fix if they're around the edge none of them snapped off yeah so you're you're sweet you're golden um, no issues there at all you'll just be able to bend them back into shape um, if you've got credit cards generally too thick um, but if you've got like if you've got some other kind of credit card like thing that's a little bit thinner like half the thickness of a normal credit card sometimes you can find something that's just the perfect thickness to fit down the rows of the pins and that's generally the easiest way to do it if not um, you can still use a card and you've just got to 
kind of like bend the whole row. It's it's a little bit awkward and stuff to do, but it can be done. Um, like I said, if you're not if you're not confident um, in doing something like that, just bring it to me. I can usually fix it in ten minutes. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Absolutely, yeah. So that's exactly that's exactly what you use. It doesn't have to be a, like anything can be a tool, right? So what you want is something that's thin and hard enough to apply a bit of tension to those pins. What was that? A cool, unlucky, really. I don't know what that's in reference to, though. <laughs> Bent pins, maybe? Bent pins. Yeah. I mean, you can... I mean, anyone... It, bent, can, bent pins can happen to anyone. Like, um, a common way... A common way that I've seen pins get bent... I've, I've done it myself, and I've seen it from other people. <laughs> when, um... And the thermal compound on top of CPUs is gets old, it gets pretty hard, basically becomes like glue. I've seen people pull coolers off an AMD CPU and they actually, when they take the cooler off, they pull the CPU out of the socket. Ah, oh, yeah, oh man, that is, that is so unlucky. And, and do you want to, so... And so, so he's up in Bundaberg. I'm in Brisbane, right? So I can't, I can't just go over and, and check it out for him. So I walk him through like troubleshooting it all, and we couldn't work it out. And I'm like, we're gonna have to take it into a shop, so someone, someone can actually look at look at it. So I called around. And I found found a shop up in Bundaberg near his house, and I told him the situation. And me and me and the um, me and the business owner up there, we were just joking around, and we're like, yeah. It's probably a motherboard, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, if it's a CPU, we're like, oh, what are the chances? It's got to be very, very low chance that it'll be a CPU based on what we, what we saw. Anyway, he brings it in. I send him up a new motherboard and then, um, yeah, get a call from, get a call from the guy. And he's like, man, it's the same thing on this new motherboard. And he's like, I think you got a dead CPU. And I just couldn't believe it. So I went and sent him up a, a new CPU. Put the new CPU in the new motherboard, worked straight away. So, someone else ended up with with that extra motherboard, but um, they got a good price on it. So, <laughs> ah, yep. <laughs> Nah, it's all good. Bent bent pins bent pins can happen. Um, one thing one thing that is coming up that some of you will know about, some of you probably don't know about, is that AMD will be moving away from having pins on the bottom of their CPUs. They're going to be going the in, the the same way that Intel does it with the LGA socket. So they're just going to have touch pads on the bottom of their CPUs. Which is the same as what AMD are using for their Epic and Threadripper workstation and server CPUs. So, it's not it's not an Intel exclusive thing. AMD is not going over to the Intel socket. It's not like that. They're they're just they're just going to streamline their design process. But this is big news for AMD because their consumer chips for years and years and years have always had pins on them. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's sort of that's sort of why I do what I do. So people want to like do upgrades and stuff on their computer and stuff over time. So if they see it get put together and. Um, have all the parts explained to them and stuff. It's um, it makes it easier for them to to upgrade and stuff. So it's part of the reason I do what I do. So what else have we got? Yeah. 
putting putting my my CPU box away from myself until my build. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to do I don't want to do any more damage. <laughs> Um, so yeah, deta details about um, AM5 socket, they're, they're pretty limited at the moment. We don't really know a great deal other than the fact that AMD is supposedly going with LGA sockets for their entire lineup now. I think there was, the, I think there was some fundamental limitation to, to what they were doing there with their current design. So I think they pushed it as far as what they can do, and now it's like we have to move on to something new. So, yeah, interesting times ahead. Oh, there's heaps, man. There's heaps. Send me a message on Facebook, I'll show you some. Heaps. Probably, probably one, one that I recommend the most is just a little bit over a hundred dollars it's about a hundred and five dollars but there are there are some other good ones under a hundred as well this is in um australian micro pesos not us dollars by the way all righty well if no one else has any other questions i might leave it there for the night and go and get some dinner and go to bed because I'm pretty tired actually. I need a I need a good sleep. Got a big day tomorrow of quotes. So happy days. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next video.